All right. You definitely should try these on your own. If you haven't already done so, pause the video. Try to do these on your own. Um, so you want to find the vertex, find that starting point, and find the domain. Those are basically the same thing. This you write as an ordered pair, 5, 2, 6, 3, 9, 5. This you write as an inequality. But they are, they are very they're like cousins of each other. This answer is this answer's cousin. If you know this one, you kind of know a little something about this one. There's, they're very similar. They're very related. Maybe they're like not even cousins. They might even be like brothers or sisters or something, siblings. Um, if you know one, you kind of know a little something about the other. So this is the more obvious one. You know, what's you, so you, you, know, you think of what could you plug in there to make this equal zero? I could plug in one, no, two, three, four. I got to go the other direction. I can make, make this cancel out. Negative eight would work. That's basically telling you something about the domain and something about the vertex. So whatever this is has to be positive, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Subtract the eight over, and you know x has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. In other words, we need a number to the right over here from negative eight. We can't go further down here. It would cause this to still be negative. Now, there's nothing over here. There's nothing shifting this up or down. So negative eight comma zero would be your vertex location. That's what that would look like. Probably should put a point there. But negative eight. It goes up from there. If you plug in a whole bunch of y, x values, you'll see you always get positive y values for this. Um, hopefully you can see how these are related to each other and how they are direct come directly from the, from the radicand. Now the other one's a little busier, has a little more action going. If the 3 fourth wasn't here, you'd probably tell me that that x value has to be positive 6. And you'd be right. But that 3 fourths is there. So this is where you really have to start to become disciplined and just learn this skill. Whatever this stuff is here, I'm going to cover it up. Somehow I'm going to cover it up. Whatever's inside the radical, here we go. Whatever's behind my pencil cannot be negative. How do you tell something it can't be negative? you got to be positive. you got to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and don't fall into this, this cardinal sin here of just, just looking at one of the numbers. You've got to consider the three-fourths. The three-fourths is affecting this. Whatever this stuff is that's behind my pencil has to be greater than zero, or it could be equal to zero, which is why I write that symbol right there. This is how you find domain or the vertex. And just solve the inequality. Solve it just like any other inequality you solved in Math 1. Solve it like any equation you solved. You'd move the 6 over by adding 6 to both sides. You'd clear the fraction because you hate fractions. Multiplying both sides by 4. 4 would cancel out here. 4 times 6, 24. And you probably divide by 3. 24 divided by 3 goes in evenly. 8 times. So that is the domain. Um, you know, I, know, I know it was funky because you thought it was going to be positive 6 over here. It ends up being positive 8 because... 3 fourths of 8 is 6, and 6 minus 6 is 0. Hopefully that makes sense for domain. And again, the range or the vertex, the ra there's nothing outside of here that would affect the range. So if you were to graph this, you'd go to positive 8, and you'd see that the graph continues on from that point over here. It would go over to the right. It wouldn't even fit on my graph here. Hopefully all that made sense. Um, have a good time trying the homework.